Hi everyone, welcome to today's lecture. Um, today we will be talking about uh, James Baldwin's short story, Sonny's Blues, and I will just start by talking about his biography and then we'll go, um, uh, we'll discuss some themes um, that's sort of used throughout the story. All right, so James Baldwin was um, an American novelist, right? A playwright, an essayist, a poet, um, and he was also a known activist, right? Um, he was born August 2nd, 1924, and died um, December 1st, 1987, um, at the age of 63, right? So, died in 1987, um, and so he was very active during the 60s, right? Um, during the um, uh, civil rights movement here in America, um, and he's known for sort of his activism uh, during that time, right? Um, in 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 his uh, literature, um, but also as um, as someone who went out to uh, to the protests and made speeches and uh, talked to um, journalists about uh, race issues in America, right? If you go to YouTube, you can actually find a lot of interviews um, with him about. Um, about his sort of like political, um, um, about uh, race and sort of uh, politics, right? So he's very, um, he's very active during that time. Um, but um, in the literary side, right, he's known as, as a novelist, a, playist, a playwright, um, an essayist, and a poet, right? Um, and he's written... Um, collections of essays, right? Um, one is Notes of a Native Son. Um, there's also another one called um, The Fire Next Time, right? Um, and has written some a lot of short stories, and um, he also wrote um, novels, right? One of which um, is Giovanni's, Giovanni, it's called, it's called uh, Giovanni's Room, right? Um, and, and so James Baldwin was also, I'm not sure um, if he came out, like when he came out, but he was also known as, uh, as a gay activist, right? Um, and so during the, the gay liberation movement, right? Um, also, um, just after, um, or just after the beginning of the civil rights movement, right? Um, he was also very active. He was he himself was a gay man, right? Um, and and so Giovanni's room um, was um, I think his first story where he featured a, a gay character, right? Uh, the, the main uh, uh, character is is gay, and, and the story is about um, um, his life in. Um, in Italy, I think, um, and his sort of like relationship with men, um, specifically with, uh, with a bartender that he fell in love with um, named Giovanni, right? Um, so, so yeah, so, so he's, he's, he's a very accomplished writer and a very accomplished um, activist, right? Um, and he's also gotten a lot of shit for, um, for his, um, I guess for his radical ideas, radical at that time, maybe not so radical anymore today, um, but very radical ideas um, during that time, and about sp uh, specifically about race issues and um, and gender and gay issues, right? So it's it's also accounted in in one of his um, essays, right? Um, how um, he realized that he was, you know, he was he was gay and he was attracted to men um, when he was a teenager, and um, you know, at that time, right, it was it was sort of like bad enough um, to be black in America and be discriminated for for being black, right? Um, and then he realizes that he was also gay, and and that sort of added to, um, I guess, to the suffering. Right, because um, homosexuality was not only sort of looked down on in, you know, in uh, white society, but also um, in black society, right? Um, and so he had this sort of, you know, a double kind of 
um, features that uh, sort of perpetuated and sort of added to his uh, suffering, right? Um, and, and there was this sort of one experience where he walked into a restaurant, right? Um, and he was denied service, right, for being black. And, um, and, and he sort of took a, a glass water bath, or a glass, uh, uh, a, a glass of water, right? Um, and threw it on the wall um, out, of, out, of, out of anger. And, and that sort of moment, um, you know, that, that moment of frustration, right, led him to, um, to think about sort of uh, leaving, right, uh, leaving America, and, and, um, and which, which he did, right, eventually he, uh, I think a couple of years after that, um, or a few years, at, at 24, I think, um, he, he left uh, America to go to Paris, right, and, and Paris at that time, or not just at that time, right, but um, throughout history, Paris has been known um, as um, as this refuge for a lot of writers who feel like they don't belong in their own countries, right? Um, uh, for for whatever reason, right? For being black, for being gay, for being a woman, right? So like uh, Paris has been sort of this space, uh, especially for for artists and writers, right? Where they felt sort of th that they have a community, right? Um, um, a community of outcasts, if you will, um, and um, right where where they they feel um, where they feel like you know there there are people there that, that can support them, and sort of the this this the city itself, right? Um, um, I guess uh, is not uh, is not very. Um, very not very conservative, you know. Very sort of open to different kinds of people um, being there, and so and so these artists, right, um, uh, are are known to 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 um, uh, to want to live in uh, Paris, right, because uh, for that reason. Uh, in the twenties, for example, right, um, and that history um, goes way back, right. Uh, but but specifically in the twenties, after World War Two, or no, after World War One, right. World War One is in nineteen seventeen. So in the in the twenties, um, Gertrude Stein, uh, she might not be familiar for you, to you, but um, she's. Um, uh, She's she's very she's a very well known uh, poet um, in Paris. Um, she was an American. She was a lesbian, right? Um, and she felt like she can't she couldn't be openly you know gay in in America. So she moved to to Paris and um, and uh, had a relationship with another woman there and and she did her art, right? But she was also sort of this because she she's, her family was rich, right? So she became sort of like a patron. Uh, for um, artists and writers, right, like um, Ernest Hemingway, Fitzgerald, um, even, you know, uh, Pablo Picasso, Matisse, um, I think Salvador Dali was also in that group, right, um, and so all of these artists sort of, like, gathered, she would host um, dinners and um, uh, Lunches, right, for all these artists, right, um, and then and then she would also she was also an art critic, and so she would give them their, um, she would she would give them her sort of advice, right, and and guide them, and and she was known for being brutally honest, right. If she didn't like your writing, she didn't like your art, she will just tell you off, right, um, and. And yeah, so Gertrude Stein sort of created this sort of space in the 20s um, in Paris, right, for um, for not only Americans, right, but, you know, Picasso and uh, Dali were from Spain, right. Um, and so people from different sort of um, places who, um, and, and Picasso at that time, you know, his, his art was, was very abstract, right, and it was not sort of, a lot of people didn't really see abstract art as a, as real art, right? Um, and so, you know, these uh, artists were very much ahead of their time, right? Um, and that's why, you know, they feel like they can freely sort of operate in that way in Paris because Paris was also very progressive, right? And not just in terms of 
you know, being open to people of different races and different genders and sexualities, right? But also um, open to um, different artistic ideas, right? Um, and so, and so that sort of um, Paris has been known uh, for that, and. And so after the 20s, right, uh, there were still a lot of people, a lot of Americans specifically, and a lot of black Americans, um, musicians, writers, right, um, and who, who then moved to Paris because um, they felt like they could do in Paris what they can't do in America, right. Um, and James Baldwin, right, was, was one of those uh, people who... Um, sort of found that refuge in America, in, in Paris, right? Um, but then eventually, right, um, so, so he, he lived in Paris and, and did his art and did his, you know, poetry and literature and, and art criticism, right? Um, and, but then he couldn't sort of cut himself off from America, right? Because obviously that's his sort of roots. He has he has family there. He he comes from a big family. Um, he his he he's um, sort of so so he was the only child uh, between um, his biological parents, right? But then after he was born, um, his father was very abusive, and so his mother left. Um, and 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 sort of you know um, had another family with another man right um, where she had um, um, eight more children right um, and so there were there were nine of them right and uh, sort of eight uh, um, step uh, siblings right um, for Baldwin and and so yeah and so so he had a very big family. Um, and he was also, um, his stepfather was also somewhat abusive to him, right? Um, and that was also another reason why, um, uh, why he felt very disillusioned, uh, in America because society, right, was very abusive to him as, um, as a black man, um, and as a gay man, um, I don't think he came out when he was in America, right? But, you know, he was sort of feeling all of these things. Um, but also at home, right, um, uh, the, the stepfather was abusive towards, um, towards the mother and uh, towards him, right? Because he was the only one, uh, uh, or he was the only child, right, that was not his. Um, and so um, it said, uh, uh, in, 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 in his biography that um, the stepfather was uh, even more abusive towards him, right? And so all of these things, right, um, uh, collectively uh, created all of that uh, sort of suffering and anger, right, inside of him. Uh, and I think that sort of, that suffering and that anger, right, um, we can see very much in, um, in Sunny, right um in, in the story and and i think that's that's where he sort of um gets a lot of that um emotion right right so as i was saying right um he he moved to paris when he was 24 but then um during um the sort of the, the peak of uh the civil rights movement right um late late 50s, early 60s, right, um, he decided to come back to America, right, because he felt like he, um, he needed to be a part of this, um, and, and he felt like even though he escaped America and he sort of uh, potentially has, you know, was having a, you know, a, better, a better time, I guess, um, uh, and had more freedom, right, in, in Paris, um, he felt like, you know, his country sort of still needed him, and he needed to sort of be part of, um, of the civil rights movement, um, and so he came back to America and became very active politically, right, um, he was very sort of well-known in Hollywood, um, he, uh, 
he befriended uh, you know a lot of you know big name actors like Marlon Brando who was a very um, good friend of his um, they even lived together uh, at one point um, Robert Kennedy um, was also a very good friend of his right um, and so and so he was very he had a lot of sort of connections in politics and in Hollywood and in, in in, in the literary world, right? So, so he used all of that, right, to um, uh, to really sort of, you know, um, I guess to 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 give voice, right, to um, To give voice, I guess, for himself, but he was more so, more so kind of like worried about uh, uh, the young uh, black men who you know who will then sort of inherit um, whatever the result of the civil rights movement uh, uh, would be, right? Um, and that's something, right? That's um, a theme in in Sonny's Blues, right? Is how sort of the suffering right of of the of the black man right to get sort of like passed on right um because of that sort of um because of the institution right of racism um and so there is a, a sense in which um that destiny is drawn right and that's something that baldwin sort of wants to disrupt right um and you know as you notice in the um, in, in the story, right, he talks a lot about, you know, how these black boys, right, um, will eventually turn into this because, you know, um, in his experience, he, he knows, you know, he, he knew another black man who also had the same experience, right. So all of these things that um, uh, seem to determine their destiny, right, um, that was something that he really wanted to disrupt, right. Um, and so yeah, and so um, he was he was he was very active um, politically um, during that time, and um, he he got a lot of you know uh, backlash, right? As as, as I mentioned, uh, because of of his activism. So so that's just um, a little context, right? Um, there's there's so much you know to talk about. Um, about James Baldwin because you know he's also written a lot about uh, his life, his experience, right? Um, and so um, his his life is sort of an open book, right? Um, so to speak. Um, and so yeah, if you have the time, kind of you know, and if you decide to to write about uh, this this story, um, you'll want to really look for um, you know other um, um, other writings, right, by him, uh, just to kind of, like, inform you better. Um, yeah, so let's just kind of um, jump into the story, right. Um, I think the story is pretty straight, straightforward, right. Um, the narrative, I think, is pretty straightforward. Um, and... But what I think is really important, right, um, there's, there's so much kind of emotion, right, that, uh, that gets delivered here, like in the dialogues, in the descriptions, right? Um, and that's, you know, um, that to me is, is the more interesting sort of part of this, um, uh, of this story, right? Um, right, um, and so, you know, we the story begins right with this unnamed narrator um, who is also Sonny's brother, right? Um, he is not named, I don't think, uh, throughout the book. He's just referred to as the brother, right? Um, and he is um, a mathematics teacher, right? Um, and it looks like he's a teacher in um, in a uh, a mainly sort of like a black school, right? Um, it, I think most of his students, if not all of his students, are black, right? Um, and so that's also um, an important uh, detail there. Um, 
so the so so the brother right opens the paper and sees that Sonny um, has been arrested right um, for heroin use right um, and this sort of this arrest right um, sort of this scene sort of triggered a lot of memories for the brother and about him and Sonny and you know and and their family right but this also sort of um, triggered a lot of um, you know, uh, racial sort of um, anxiety, right? Um, because, you know, um, the black experience linked to the police being arrested, right, doing drugs, these are sort of, um, this is sort of like what, um, what, what they always sort of like try to avoid, right? Um, and, and it seems like the brother has sort of avoided this, right? Um, uh, it, it seems like he has sort of, you know, done well, gone to, gone to school, got his degree, and then became a teacher, right? And in some way sort of um, avoided that sort of fate of, of being arrested and being sort of, you know, involved in drugs and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, but for his, for his brother, right, Sonny, um, whose destiny, right, um, who seemed to sort of like fulfilled, um, this destiny of, 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 of the black man, right, um, and so that sort of, um, created for the brother, uh, a lot of anxiety, right, um, because obviously, you know, he didn't want that for his brother, but, um, but it happened, right? Um, and then so we get introduced, right, to uh, a seemingly strained relationship, right, between Sonny and his brother, right? Um, and it seems strained because, you know, as, as you notice, um, they, they have a sort of like a very different approach um, to life, I think. Um, Sonny is sort of more... Um, artistic and more sort of um, musical, right? Um, and he doesn't really like a lot of people, right? Um, he sort of idolizes this, you know, musicians like Charlie Parker, right? Um, and he sort of, you know, his his world revolves um, around music and playing music. Right, and specifically jazz, right? Um, while the brother, right, is is very much concerned about, you know, how to sort of provide for the family and sort of, you know, typical kind of, you know, um, uh, 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 life um, hopes and dreams, I guess, right? Um, to finish school, do well at school, you know, become a teacher, have a family, and have children, and this and that, right? Um, so that sort of, that uh, created a little bit of tension between them, because um, on the one hand, right, Sonny wants his brother to understand why he sort of lives this kind of life, right? Um, and then the brother, right, also wants to understand that Sonny is like that, but then he's also scared Right, that if Sonny sort of gets involved with music, gets involved with jazz, right, that he will sort of eventually um, be led sort of to this life of, you know, drug use and um, be arrested, right, which sort of, um, which is what happened to him, right. And yeah, so... So, so we get introduced to the brother, um, and and sort of you know how how their fate is sort of determined for them, right? Um, because of um, uh, and uh, systemic racism is also very much um, a part of what operates outside, right? So this story is is very much you know is very intimate about the brother about about the brothers about their family right but you also get the sense that there is a, a larger kind of machine right that's um, operating right in the story right um, there's a machine that's sort of um, dictating right um, 
how their lives right um, uh, are sort of determined right um, and of course that is sort of you know systemic racism that's uh, that's doing that right um, and and when I say systemic racism right um, that's linked to you know um, racism in housing racism in education racism in in the government, racism in the police, right? And all of these sort of institutions, right, um, are also mentioned in, in, in the story, right? Um, so these are sort of like the larger sort of uh, uh, machine that's operating, and then we get the story uh, of, of the brothers, right? And, okay, so on page 19, or page 18, right? Um, so his, uh, the brother was teaching, um, and, this is, and this is why I think he's teaching in a, in a, in a, in a black school, uh, because, um, all right, so top of page 18, um, yet it happened, right? Um, so I didn't want to believe that I'd ever see my brother going down, coming to nothing, all that light in his face gone out. Uh, in the condition I'd already seen so many others. Yet it happened, and here I was, talking about algebra to a lot of boys who might, every one of them, for all I know, be popping off needles every time they went to the head. Maybe it did more for them than algebra could. Right. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so it seems like he's teaching um, um, other black boys, too, um, because... Um, he's sort of like see, see Sonny, right, uh, in, these, uh, in these black boys um, who, um, whose destiny, right, um, could very much, uh, 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 or could very much be sort of, you know, the same as, as Sonny's who, you know, um, who, who do um, drugs and then get arrested, right. Um, so there is that issue of systemic racism, right, um, that's sort of operating outside of the story, right. Um, but I think what's also important in the story, right, um, is that it's trying to give, because, um, yeah, there is, it's, it's partly true that the black experience is determined, right, by sort of um, by systemic racism, right? Um, but it's also true, right, that there is a sort of individual experience sort of happening, um, you know, um, sort of in within the sort of black experience, right? Um, and, and notice on page 20, right, uh, middle of page 20, the brother says, look, don't tell me your sad story. This is, um, the brother is talking to um, another black man whose friends I think of Sonny. Um, look, don't tell me your sad story. If it was up to me, I'd give you one. Then I feel guilty. Guilty probably for never having supposed that the poor bastard had a story of his own, much less a sad one. And I asked quickly, what's going to happen to him now? Right. Um, so there's, there's, there's there's this, this there's this desire right um, there's this desire for for the story um, there's there's a desire in the narrator right to to sort of to to understand um, within the black experience right that there is also individual stories and he tries to be sympathetic right um, to to this sort of uh, to these different um, experiences. Right. Um, then let's move to page 24. Right. Um, bottom of page 24. So we drove along between the green of the dark of the park and the stony lifeless, lifeless elegance of hotels and apartment buildings. Um, this is after he sort of picked up Sonny uh, from the uh, from jail, I think, and then, 
yeah, they were driving back to um, to the brother's house, but then they wanted to stop. Um, Sonny asked him if they could stop um, in their old neighborhood, or at least go in the direction of their old neighborhood so that, you know, he can kind of uh, get a glimpse of, of the old neighborhood again, right? Um, lifeless elegance of hotels and apartment buildings store the vivid killing streets of our childhood. These streets hadn't changed, though housing projects jutted up out of them, now like rocks in the middle of a boiling sea. Most of the house in which she had grown up had vanished, as had the stores from which she had stolen, uh, the basements in which she had first tried sex, the rooftops from which she had hurled tin cans and bricks, but houses exactly like the houses of our past, yet dominated the landscape. Boys exactly like the boys who once had been uh, found themselves smothering in these houses, came down into the streets for light and air and found themselves encircled by disaster. Some escaped the trap, most didn't. But those who got out always left something, themsel something of themselves behind, as some animals amputate a leg and leave it in the trap. Right. Um, so I think this description has so much going on, right? Um, just notice the, the way that the streets, right, um, are described, right? Um, life, lifeless elegance, right, of hotels and apartment buildings toward the vivid, uh, killing streets of our childhood, right? So it's a very sort of, a very dark kind of description of the neighborhood here. Um, these streets hadn't changed, right? It's housing projects, right? Um, jutted up, jutted out, out of them, now like rocks in the middle of a boiling sea, right? That's that's a very chilling description, I think. Right. Um, yeah. And then towards the end of that passage, right? Some escaped the trap, most didn't, right? Uh, those who got out left something of themselves behind as some animals amputate a leg and leave it in the trap, right? So, so yeah, so presumably, right, um, the brother and Sonny um, have sort of escaped, right? They went on their different paths, right? But they somewhat kind of like escaped um, that neighborhood, right? But, um, you know, even though they've escaped, right, they know that uh, a lot of people didn't, weren't able to escape. They either, you know, um, did something and was put to prison or they ended up uh, getting killed, right? Um, or, you know, or they ended up getting stuck there um, in, the, in the housing project, right? Um, and so that sort of, there is, um, you know, the, the, that's something of themselves that's left behind, right? Um, you can kind of think of that as, as almost kind of like a guilt, right? Um, that you got out, but you know that there's a lot of people who were not able to get out, right? Um, especially for the brother, right? Since the brother sort of um, is the more kind of stereotypically um, successful, right? Um, and so there is a part of him Right, um, who knows that you know, even though he sort of got out, right, and there's there's still a lot of people who did not, um, and it's not their fault, right, because well, obviously they're sort of like operating within this uh, system, um, right. Okay, and and then I also wanted to talk about on page 26, right? Um, middle of page 26, and this is um, a description of Sonny now, right? Um, and this was partly because Sonny was the apple of his father's eye, right? All right, let me start in the beginning of the paragraph, middle of page 26. So it always went on like this, but he wasn't ever really as bad as he sounded not even on weekends when he got drunk. As a matter of fact, he was always on the lookout for something a little better, but he died before he found it. 
right? This is talking about Sonny's, um, their dad. He died suddenly during a drunken weekend in the middle of the war when Sonny was 15. He and Sonny hadn't ever got on too well, and this was partly because Sonny was the apple of his father's eye. It was because he loved Sonny so much and was frightened for him that he was always fighting with him. It doesn't do any good to fight with Sonny. Sonny just moves back inside himself where he can't be reached. Right. Um, and I think that that's important. And that, that's a theme that gets repeated, right? This idea that Sonny is always sort of going inside of himself, right? Um, and, and I think that is, you know, if you're someone like Sonny, right? Uh, or if you're someone like James Baldwin, um, who feel like it's very difficult for you to function outside of yourself, right? Because, because of your race, because of sexuality, right? Um, because of your ideas, right? Um, that's different from, you know, what's socially acceptable. Um, if you can function outside of yourself, right, then, then you sort of like look within, Right. It's, it's a way of protecting yourself to sort of to, to, to look uh, or to, to look inside, but also to, to keep everything inside, sort of um, in, to, to hide inside, I guess. Right. Um, and to sort of to keep secrets. Right. To be secretive. Right. Um, and and, you know, this sort of like being secretive. Right. Um, is. It's, 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 it's not only sort of a way for the individual, right, to, to sort of, to process um, their grief and their suffering, right, but it's also a way of, right, protecting themselves, right, from, uh, from outside of themselves uh, because they don't feel safe sort of functioning there, right. So, so that sort of, that going inside of themselves is... Um, of sunny self, right, is, I think, uh, important. Okay, uh, there's just one last passage that I want to talk about. Um, this is on page 35, right? So page 35, um, maybe a third from the top, right? Uh, this entire uh, paragraph in the middle uh, I'm going to read. And this is this is Sonny, or this is a description of Sonny, right? Um, Sonny and his relationship, right, to um, to music and to sound, right. So, well, I really don't know um, how they they stood it. Isabel finally confessed that it wasn't like living with a person at all. So this is after, um, so Sonny uh, lived with, um, Isabel is the brother's wife, right? Um, lived with Isabel um, and Isabel's family for a little while. Um, and, um, and, and Sonny liked living there because they had a piano and he would be able to play the piano, right? Um, and so he was just there and, you know, doing his thing, making music and stuff like that. And, and, and the people around him, Isabel and the other, other family members, were just kind of, you know, there observing him because he was just this, he, get, he just gets so um, wrapped up into his own world uh, and, and into music, right, and into the sound of jazz um, whenever he's sort of performing, right? That's sort of like his escape, right? Um, so, yeah, so this is a, sort of a reaction to that, right? So... Well, I really don't know uh, how they stood it. Isabel finally confessed that it wasn't like living with a person at all. It was like living with sound. And the sound didn't make any sense to her. It didn't make any sense to any of them, naturally. They began, in a way, to be afflicted by his presence that was living in their home. It was, it was as though Sonny were some sort of god or monster. He moved in an atmosphere which wasn't like theirs at all. They fed him and he ate. He washed himself. He walked in and out of their door. He certainly wasn't nasty or unpleasant or rude. Sonny isn't any of those things. But it was as though he were all wrapped up 
in some cloud, some fire, some vision all his own, and there wasn't any way to reach him. Right, so that is just, I don't know, like it's, it's a very kind of powerful uh, passage because it's hard to know what, you know, like it's, it's describing Sonny, right? But it's, it's hard to know, like, well, it's hard to get an idea of Sonny, right, um, through this description, right? But also it, it fits Sonny, right? Like Sonny can't be described, right? Um, he's kind of like a, a sound, right? Um, and sound is, is very important, right? Because um, sound is, is often, it's something that is more abstract than language. And so um, it's, it, it, it's hard to understand. Right. Um, with language, a lot of times, you know, we, we articulate something because we want something to be meaningful, to, to be precise, to be, to be exact, to be true, right, to be factual. Um, and that's why language, you know, has a, a way of being precise, right? Um, but then sound, just sound, right, it's, it's more abstract. It, it's, it's hard to tell what that sound means, right? just by hearing it. Uh, and so in that sense, it's very much like Sunny, right? Where it's hard to sort of um, know what he is, what, what he wants, you know, it's, it's hard to sort of make sense of his suffering, right? Um, and I think, yeah, sound is, is a very important uh, part of this, of this story, right? And not just sound also, but jazz music, right? And, and jazz is particularly um, important because it it has this quality of um, syncopation, right? Um, where um, there there is a kind of you know in, in music like harmony is supposed to be, and I'm not <laughs> I'm not a very sort of like musical person, but you know I, I I think I know a little bit just you know from whatever from reading, uh, but you know um, harmony, right? Um, and th and the sound sort of like fitting together, right, um, is is very important, right, in music, but but jazz has this quality, right, of syncopation where, like, not fitting perfectly or being being displaced, right, the meters uh, being displaced is actually uh, a good thing, right. So so that kind of structure of like not quite sort of. Uh, placing together, not quite harmonizing, right, but it still gives us something beautiful, right. Um, I think that is very important here, right, this, this sense that, you know, um, maybe Sunny is something that we can't really, we shouldn't try to make sense of, right, the same way that we can't make sense of sound, or we can't make sense of sort of jazz, right, um, that it sort of like operates in a different way, Right. It shouldn't be sort of, we shouldn't try to understand it based on the standard that we know traditionally. Right. It should be sort of understand in a different way. Right. Um, and I think, yeah, that's, you know, and if you're interested in music, that's definitely something that you can, you'll probably know more about than, than I. Um, yeah, and that's, you know, it'd be wonderful if you can, you know, write about that um, in your papers. Right. So I think I'll just uh, end there. There's so much still to talk about, but um, I don't want to sort of, you know, make this uh, lecture very long. So I'll just stop there. And, you know, if you have any questions or, or if, you have, if you want to uh, talk to me more about uh, this, this story, if you decide to write about it, you know, feel free to, to email me or um, meet, me with, meet with me through Zoom. All right. Thank you.